This time, I will explain how to correct the aging process on face and neck. Aging process first appears as aging skin. Therefore, areas such as forehead, eyebrows, fat pouch under the eye, cheeks, jawline, neck, and mouth corners start to sag. Next phenomenon of aging process is decrease in overall facial volume. Since volume is decreased, forehead becomes flatter and depression occurs on temple areas and lower lid, then nasolabial folds appear around the mouth and cheeks become depressed as well. Then the skin starts to age. As people age, skin becomes thinner with the aging process. Phenomena such as roughness, pigmentation, vasodilation, and overall darkening of skin appear. Let's first look at the picture describing facial changes with aging process. As we can see on the picture, where skin has great elasticity without sagging during the 20s, in the middle age, in other words around the 40s, skin starts to sag and become depressed. Also, boundaries of each facial part becomes distinct. It means that the border between eyes and cheekbones, as well as the place where cheeks and mouth meet, become more distinct. In the 60s, these aging phenomena becomes more noticeable. Therefore, the process of reclaiming youth and health is called anti-aging. Generally, anti-aging refers to all the activities, medication, food, mind training, exercise, surgery, etc. that aid in living a younger and healthier life. The anti-aging usually performed by the hospital includes lifting surgery, volume replenishment by fat injection, massage, as well as equipments and procedures such as home care cosmetics, peeling that makes skin youthful and healthy. There is no rule of right which makes the skin beautiful. It means that it's not possible to make the skin great in short period of time. Therefore, since skin is under the influence of aging process throughout the lifetime, manage the skin with the determination to take care of it for lifetime. Then there are many questions about when is the best time to have anti-aging surgery. As I mentioned before, it's better to take care of the skin from youth. Also, in order to replenish volume loss from losing weight or aging process, fat injection can be performed even during youth. Then, facelift is best performed when skin starts to sag. Usually, it's best to have it in mid-40s, and although it is effective for those who want to have the surgery later on, results do not last very long. On the contrary, having the surgery in the beginning of middle age, that is, in 40s, will result in effective outcome which lasts for a very long time. After surgery, the effects last for at least 10 years, and normally the outcome lasts for about 15 years. If I may explain the facelift, generally facelift is performed along with neck lift. Rather than just lifting the face, lifting the neck at the same time is more effective. The most central procedure of facelift is making jawline and neckline. This photo shows greatly improved jawline after surgery. Then the profile view shows just how well the jawline improved and how the turkey gobbler neck has been lifted up. Hence, correction of jawline and neckline is most important in neck lift. In other words, in facelift, sagging jawline must be well corrected, and in neck lift, this line must be well made in order to maintain the angle where neckline and neck meet. Also, facelift is not the surgery of pulling skin. There is a facial layer beneath the skin called smas layer, and this must be properly dissected and pulled back in order to create satisfactory results later on. The area held by pinset in the photo is the smas layer. 
Pulling this smudge layer will naturally pull the skin along. Smuts must be well fixated in order to avoid creating tension on skin and it barely leaves scars. This method is called deep plane facelift. These days, facelift using thread is prevalent, but based on my experience, method of pulling with thread is either barely effective or ineffective. Also, although I performed numerous minimal incision facelifts in the past, this surgical method also has very limited effectiveness. This patient had facelift using thread in the past. However, because she didn't see much effectiveness, she came to our clinic for another facelift. This many threads came out just from one side of the face. Despite so many threads, facelift was ineffective. This patient also told me that golden threads were put in her face as well. Face and neck lift can never be corrected using this kind of method. Also, I've already mentioned that effectiveness of minimal incision method is very limited. The picture here shows minimal incision facelift. It's also called max lift. However, the biggest problem of this method is that it only pulls unnecessary cheek areas and since it pulls upwards, the mandibular angle becomes flat. Also, because mandibular angle becomes flat, the jaws look even worse. Not only that, correcting the sac neck is very difficult. Therefore, in our hospital, we use the method which extends the incision line behind the ear to correct jawline and neckline at the same time. This is the previously mentioned deep plane facelift. Although incision is extended behind the ear, since the post-auricular area is not visible to sight, there is no need to worry about the scar sight. Here's the actual incision line. Incision made along the red line is the minimal incision and extending it behind the ear in the white line will make the jawline and neckline. This is the surgical outcome through the long incision method. As you can see now, jawline and neckline have been corrected to near perfection. Then I will simply explain the surgical procedure. Usually the reason why surgeries using minimal incision or threads are performed is because of the complex anatomical structure shown in this photo. Especially without the knowledge of facial nerves anatomy, this kind of fundamental facelift and neck lift cannot be performed and therefore the only options are surgeries using minimal incision or threads. Before surgery, accurate design must be made and on the pre and post auricular incision areas, anatomical structures are marked. Shown here is the post-auricular incision line. I have mentioned many times before that incision must extend behind the ear in order to pull neck and jawline. Especially if there is a large fat deposit under the chin or the person has thick neck, then incision is made right beneath the jawline for liposuction. Or in some cases, there are platysmal bends or low hyoid bone position. In this case, like the photo shown here, about 4 cm incision is made under the jawline and anterior neck might have to be corrected through this incision. After pre and post auricular incision, skin is dissected on the subcutaneous fat layer. Then for the correction of neck, dissection becomes a bit wider. White dissection is essential for making neckline later on. This photo might look slightly repulsive, but after lifting the skin by dissecting subcutaneous fat layer, the area marked by a purple line can be seen. On this line, dissection continues under the smas layer up to the mouth corners. As you can see in the picture, dissection made beneath the smas layer is called deep plane facelift. 
Therefore, as dissection continues forward, many important structures are exposed: their fascia, parotid gland, and facial nerves. These things must be well protected in order to avoid facial deformation later on. From here on is the core surgical procedure. This is the view after dissection. Deep plane facelift must fixate the smas layer well, and is not about pulling the skin. If skin is pulled, a lot of scar will be left later on. Also, smas layer must be firmly fixated on preauricular, lobular, and postauricular areas. Finally, excess skin is removed, and then the remaining parts are sutured. This patient is male in his mid fifties, and he has severely sagging face and neck. Here is three weeks post-operative view. He had especially many neck wrinkles that were well corrected after surgery. Here's the profile view. Not using this kind of method, in other words, forcefully pulling the skin without pulling the smas layer or disregarding the incision line, cannot yield satisfactory results later on. As you can see now, lots of scar can remain and hairline will be ruined as well. After properly performed surgery, scars must be invisible like this. This is a male patient with short hair. Surgery was well completed with nearly invisible scar. Then we will look at our result of patients who had the surgery. This was a female patient in her 50s with severely sagging face and neck. I have mentioned numerous times that correction of face and neck is very important, and this is the front view and 45 degree angle view after such surgery. And I'd like you to pay special attention on jawline and neck. From the profile view, you can see that jawline and neckline have been corrected to near perfection. This is the front view of another patient, and we can see that the jawline and neckline have been corrected to near perfection. This patient had small chin, therefore jaw was augmented and silicone implant was put in her chin. Then the patient had facelift and neck lift. This is a male patient with sagging face and especially many neck wrinkles. As you can see now, jawline and neckline must be well corrected in order to consider the facelift and neck lift successful. Until now, you have seen the facial aging process, surgical method, and results after surgery. Recovery process after surgery usually takes longer than other surgeries. The patient must be hospitalized at least for two nights and three days, and stitches on the face are removed after seven days. Then, normal social activities are possible after two weeks. Just like any other surgery, complete recovery takes about three to six months. Like other surgeries, there is a possibility of side effects. Surgery could leave scars, and since the dissection area is white, hematoma and infection could occur, and facial nerves and salivary glands can be damaged, and excessively removing the skin can result in pixie ears. Primary reason of pixie ears is due to just pulling the skin instead of smas layer. In order to minimize this kind of side effects, the surgeon must master anatomy. Also, he must operate after having accumulated many experiences. To simply summarize the face and neck lifts, jawline and neckline must be well corrected for a successful surgery. And you must remember that although the surgical result is very excellent, it is costly and takes long time to recover. In addition, surgical effect lasts at least for 10 years, and usually it's maintained for about 15 years. Thank you.